excellent job breaking it down. Come back more, David. Lay more of it out. Then we'll talk to Jakari Jackson after that. Stay with us on this live Friday global transmission. Infowars.com. Spread that URL far and wide. I'll be back this Sunday, Lord willing, 4 to 6 p.m. with the Sunday transmission. I'll be doing some uh, Facebook mentions as well tonight and tomorrow, right through Sunday, on our big Facebook channel. David Knight's our guest. Jakari Jackson's also coming up. Jakari, I hope, can recap some of the amazing video reports they've been shooting on a host of issues. Uh, so really glad you guys are there covering it. I want to get back into this moment of world government, but separate from that, David, you've come down here to Texas, your wife, uh, your family, you're doing a great job. You know, I've told you about backup plans. If they try to come after me, I've kept you out of the whole business end of things for you and Paul Watson to fill my shoes. If they kill me or if they set me up long before this, I knew stuff was going on. Uh, but I'm sure you may have read this morning and, and, and uh, perhaps seen a video uh, where source White House has FBI task force investigating info wars. I mean, they've got all these White House run media outlets saying you know, it's time to arrest me and stuff. Uh, so. This just, and it's not just, I'm just a canary in the coal mine. They're going after people across the board, which shows we have power, which shows we're having an effect, which shows they need to not have any opposition to execute what they're about to do. It's a very reckless move. It's not like there hasn't been corruption in government before in this country, but it was smart enough to not go after vocal opposition in the middle of the sun, sunny day. Um, this is really getting to crazy town. Your take, David Knight. Well, Alex, that's very true. As I was listening to the uh, press conference where John Boehner resigned, and again, that's something that we've been pushing really hard for. He tried to put a brave face on it. One of the reporters said, uh, if you don't have anybody following you, you're not a leader. You're just somebody taking a walk. And, and that's the key. That's what we have to understand. When I look at all the people following the Pope. The government has a 9% approval rating. We have a high, exactly, it's illegitimate. Go ahead, sorry. Well, when I look at all these people, following the Pope. Uh, to me, the big story is not the prepared speeches that the Pope is making. Yes, it's important that he's selling nonsense that the environment has rights. So it would be laughable if we knew, if we didn't know that that was going to be taken literally and used against us. But the thing that gives him power are the people that follow him not knowing what the agenda is about. And so that's our task, Alex, is to tell people what's behind this, to give them a broader perspective. If you want to understand what this is about in the immediate future. It's about climate change. That's the next governance. And you can see that by the uh, Chinese president coming with Obama and the Pope at the same time, going to the UN, going to Congress, trying to push this through. They could not get it done last time because uh, the GOP was able to push back and say, look, you can't put restrictions on us that China is not going to take. It's not going to, you don't talk to me about global warming, about a global climate issue if you're only going to put this selectively on the developed nations. So they learned their lesson. They bided their time. They're back and they've got now, the big third world leader. The Pope is the leader of the third world, he, that mainly Catholic yes. of the third world. They've now got him there yes. to sucker them in to the eugenics, extermination, uh, austerity movement, which will kill a billion people, or Moncton's numbers show it. And that's why I get so angry at him. He knows full well this is an exterminist agenda. Exactly. Let me read you what Mother Jones said, because they're not Catholic. They're not looking at this with the starry eyes of someone who's, who's projecting onto the Pope what they would like it to be. They said something big and strange is happening in the U.S. this week. Obama, the Pope, and the president of China are teaming up to save the world. No, they're teaming up to rule the world. That's precisely what this is about, and they're doing it for the people behind the scenes. That's the agenda that you need to understand. It's being sold as being compassionate. It's being sold. And we've got the Ford Foundation, a fake liberal publication, lauding a foreign communist leader, the Pope and the president combining forces uh, to save us when we know it's all about tyranny. Yes. And of course, all of them are on the same page when it comes to a redistribution of wealth, uh, all the money in the hands of a few people. The Chinese government it was communist when it suited them. Now they're a, a group of fascists. And that's really what this is. There's not really any difference when you get down to it at the, at the end game. There's no difference between fascism and communism. It's a small elite cabal that is running everything, and they can just use whatever label they want. People have to get beyond labels. They have to get beyond personality. That's what concerns me so much, Alex, about the GOP election when I see everybody falling in love with personality or on the 
uh, Democrat side, as we saw with Obama eight years ago. We need to look at the agenda of these people. We need to vet them carefully, and we need to stop putting all of our hopes on some distant uh, high ruler that is going to save us in, in this life, and we need to work at the local level. Now, today he was at the 9-11 uh, Memorial Museum here. They had a multi-religion service uh, that's now over. But Alex, as we were watching that, he was saying, and all of these different religious leaders were saying, every Every life is valuable, and all religions take all these lives as as indispensable. Well, the key is they if get to true. speak. They get to speak for the environment and the quote, all religions working together in freedom. And then they let yeah. radical Islam run wild, but then arrest Christians for free speech. Stay there, David. I want you to finish up. Then we're going to go to Jakari Jackson and get his take. He's been filing amazing reports. It's all coming up straight out on this Friday edition. Then back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. If they have a SWAT team to me. <laughs> and I tell you, this is exciting. We stand at a historic crossroads. We've passed the point of no return. World government denied for so long. Now out in the open. A pope calling for a one-world religion. Major companies from Japan to Mexico, from the Netherlands to Chile, are demanding their employees take chips to be able to enter the building. Cash is to be banned. World ID cards are being promoted. David Knight is our reporter on the ground outside the World Trade Center. They were outside the UN earlier today. Jakari Jackson is going to give us his take on a bunch of issues in a moment. But David Knight, you were getting into this epic moment where they push the entire eugenics, transhumanist, animal rights movement that isn't about animal rights, but about government taking human liberty away in the name of animals, the end of private property. I mean, this is all happening with this fabulously rich Pope uh, and Obama and the Chinese president lecturing everyone on austerity as they get ready to screw the people. In the past, governments tried to create prosperity to be popular. Now they sell us on how ugly we are and how great it is to be poor. This is truly a 1984 society, a world of being trampled and being trampled upon and trampling. Exactly, Alex. They're, they're telling you that they're going to stand for the environment, that the environment has rights, that animals have rights. This is the path to tyranny. They're going to be the ones who tell you how to protect the environment, how to protect the rights. It's just a, a beard. And of course, today what we saw was uh, essentially a world religion ceremony. Look, I know a lot of people look at this and they say, isn't it great that all these different religions could come together and agree that 9-11 was a bad thing? And I say, yes, it is. But that's not the way you get religious tolerances by, a, by having a one world religion that says that we all worship the same God. That is, if you believe that, you're a fool. If you tell people that, you're a deceiver. The way to have tolerance of people is by something called the First Amendment. We solved that problem here in America once upon a time. We're about to undo that again, because if you have a one world religion, there will be no tolerance for your religion. If it's well, we already see Christians being religion. targeted under this liberal one world religion garbage. Yes. The only religion yes. being targeted is true Christianity. And, and let me tell you, you know, the, the Pope is very concerned about the Muslims who, who died as part of the Hajj, you know, in, in, uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia. And there were over 700 people who died in a stampede. That has, that's the seventh incident, according to my count, since 1990. Over 3,000 people have died doing that. So it's happening over and over and over again. Yet the Pope will not criticize Islam for that. Do you think if there were 3,000 people shot in New York City by, by gunmen, you think he'd have something to say about that? He'd blame the gun. He'd blame the gun culture. He's not blaming Islam or the Muslim culture for this repeated stampeding and death. It's, it's just what we're seeing here today with the with the one world religion. And I got to say, what this is too, behind like, the stampeding? I mean, isn't it just Mecca's letting too many people in? The Saudis are letting too many people into that side of Medina. They have a ceremony. The stoning of uh, Satan, and it gets them worked up into a fury, and uh, they have uh, 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 people get stampeded because they start running over each other. It's a massive crowd, and the, just the lack of control. But I want to say this in terms of the preciousness of each life, because we heard that from all the different leaders of all these different religions today. If they really believe that. They would be standing at an abortion clinic because there are more children that are killed each day with an abortion 
than there were who people who died here on 9-11. We have a 9-11 every day at abortion clinics, but this pope can't be bothered to say that. When I was standing, uh, taking pictures, we got the motorcade coming in earlier this morning at the UN, I heard people talking around me, and one of them said, uh, this guy is great. Every time this pope talks, he makes people understand the plight of those who have less than them, and he did a great job by not feeding the right-wing pro-lifers. You understand that? Feel sorry for people because they don't have as much money as you do, but don't feel sorry for them because they're having their life taken. That's the kind of calculus. Well, it's their, it's their religion. It's their religion. This is what yes. they're pushing. Yes. And he's spouting classical Marxism. And, and then now all these leftists just love the Pope. See, they love a religion yes. that pushes yes. their idea because they're in a religion of collectivism that ends free will and ends language and makes you adopt their orthodox view of the world. Yes, absolutely. He had one other thing, too, I want to tell you, Alex, and that was when he met privately with the clergy, I believe it was a, a private meeting in Washington that this quote came out of, but he was talking to the church leaders that were there, and this is what he had to say to them. He said, uh, many of you have suffered greatly in the not-too-distant past by having to bear the shame of some of your brothers who harmed and scandalized the church in the most vulnerable of her members. Do you catch that? The only thing he really had to say about the pedophile controversy within the Roman Catholic Church was, I'm sorry that some of you were embarrassed by being connected with that. He doesn't talk about the heinousness of this. And Alex, when I look at the way he didn't personalize people, it, he just said, I'm yeah. sorry, it, 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 it embarrassed our thing. Yes, it embarrassed our institution. I'm so sorry because you're part of the institution. But just like we see with the police, they don't purge the evildoers out of their midst. That is how you embrace corruption. That's how you propagate corruption. And I thought it was absolutely outrageous that that's the only thing that we've seen of that. If you want to talk about how you are there to help the children, then do something to help the children. Stop people from killing them and selling their baby parts and stop people from molesting them sexually. Then we can have a conversation about what else you want to do to protect the children. But people need to understand the, the thousands, tens of thousands of people, whatever, that are here, they need to understand that this moral high ground that he has is simply a mask, a facade for a globalist agenda so they can rule the world. And you can see that with the confluence of the Pope and the Chinese president and Obama coming together sure, it's just, on this it's next completely step of epic. global governance. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a Pope joins forces with Obama and Communist China to take over the world. This is a true axis of eugenics, a, a, a true axis of destroying um, any type of industrialization, clean industrialization around the world. Thank you so much. Uh, David Knight. Well, thank you, uh, Alex. Thank and I, I want to say, I want to say too that uh, no matter what happens, I'm not going anywhere. Jakari's not going anywhere. We're standing with you, Alex. Well, I know our audience is as well, and you know this is from real sources, but they could also be telling these people this just to jerk our chain, and, and knowing we'll say it, so it'll scare the audience. But that's because they think we're cowards. Uh, we're not, uh, and and we always just disclose what's going on, and we get all these secret documents, we get all these great sources, and we get all these whistleblowers because we're crazy enough to put it out and i've been through a lot of persecution before this it's been kind of quiet the last few years and i know i go after the white house all the time and i point out what a fraud they are and what liars they are and uh you know and i have walter jones and all these folks on trying to get the 28 pages released and i go after the saudis yeah. and i go after you know you go after them and, and we're really reaching over a billion people a month on social networks hundreds of millions on the videos Tens of millions every week on the websites and, and, and the radio show. And it just really, really scares them. And they understand, hey, if we take this guy out, it'll make him a martyr. But if we don't, he just keeps getting bigger because everything he talked about, everything his people talked about is now out in the open. His credibility is going up. We can't just call him a kook who believes in Martians all day. And so, uh, you know, I said it. I told you privately. I said launching this network and making the system more serious and having the f fancy sets and sending reporters out is going to really get their attention and is really going to have them, you know, do this. So we knew what we were doing, and I believe out of whatever comes of this, we're only going to reach more people, and it's going to be more effective because everything that's been done to me, stuff people wouldn't believe, I'm not going to get into it, it's off record, it has just suddenly when one door closes or something bad happens, all this good stuff happens. It's like angels come to our aid, the prayers, it is, it is manifest destiny, it is providence, and 
I'm just humbled to be part of this and to be in the middle of it and to see what's happening. That's why I tell you, the crew, <clears throat> you're part of something epic and big. I mean, if, a, a, a month ago, they crunched the numbers and said, Alex, it's a bigger audience. You're using two-year-old numbers. Here's the audience. And we look at it with computerized graphs. I mean, it's epic big, and it's getting bigger.